take time to mentor. It's not a trivial pursuit. The idea, if the young people don't know about mentoring, I just want you to know that there's, it's a great opportunity to get somebody old like myself to help you as you're younger growing up. And it's a great opportunity for us old folks to, to help mentor some young folks. The story is about Bob Crippen who flew on the first shuttle mission. He was the pilot on SDS-1. And I'll make this one short, but the, Bob used to be the director of the shuttle program at, uh, in Washington. He got selected to move to Florida as the director of the Kennedy Space Center 15 years ago. Little did I know that one day I would have a chance to sit in his seat. But I was playing a game. I was at Washington at the time for a one-year assignment, playing Trivial Pursuit. And you see the question, what did John Young and Bob Crippen take into orbit? Well, you turn it over, the answer is Space Shuttle Columbia that they took back in 1981. But I sent it to Bob just almost as a joke that said, you're kind of, kind of a big shot, aren't you? You made it into Trivial Pursuit. Uh -huh. But he was always a mentor of mine. And instead of just tossing it in the trash can, he took the time to write a note on it to give me a separate little letter. And my friends knew that it was special, and they had it matted and framed as, as a keepsake for me. So he took the time to be a mentor. It's not a Trivial Pursuit. Now I'm going to have to, uh, let me see. Uh, I guess I'll just stay in order, but I'm stopping in eight minutes. Uh, it's a grand old flag. This one is all about honoring our country. Uh, a noble thing to do, for sure. And I just start with a couple of images of, of the American flag that are somewhat iconic. When you come to see the shuttle at the Kennedy Space Center, you'll see this flag painted on the wall. Just to put it in perspective, the stars are six feet from point to point. And if you think that's big, well, here's John Young, who uh, flew the first shuttle mission. Two Gemini missions, twice to the moon on Apollo, two shuttle missions. This is his mission on Apollo 16 to the moon where he planted his flag. If you thought the other flag was big, this is out of Lompoc, California, right next to the Vandenberg Air Force Base. These are two million flowers planted to represent our American flag. And the tip-to-tip -tip dimensions of each of those stars is 24 feet. Wow. Of each star, so it helps you appreciate just how big that star is. When you come, if you call and we're home, we'd love to have you come by the house. This is a picture you'll see of our flag flying off of our coast. And last but not least, I hate to say too much about my coach, but he, he does find his way into this quite a bit. At my retirement dinner four years ago, Mike was able to get into the vault at the Johnson Space Center where they keep all this stuff and get this flag and mount it on a plaque that he gave me. And that flag, I'm not bragging, yeah, I am too. Yeah, I am. <laughs> that flag went to the surface of the moon on Apollo 17. Whoa. <laughs> surface of the moon on Apollo 17. So when we run out of money, we're going to think maybe on eBay, but until then, <laughs> <laughs> hands off. Uh, when things go wrong, stay cool. I'm going to go fast so I can squeeze in as many as I can in five minutes. They say that one of the reasons Neil Armstrong was selected for that coveted role of flying as a commander on Apollo 11 is the way he handled himself in a crisis twice before that day. And the oldest one is uh, on the Gemini 8 mission. One of Gemini 8's objectives was to show that you can rendezvous with a target like you have to do when you go to the moon and dock with that target vehicle. He did that. He was the commander of Gemini 8 with Jack Scott, who, by the way, later flew as the commander on Apollo 15. And as soon as they docked with this target, they called the Atlas Agena target, it was up there in space. It launched several weeks earlier. It was up there waiting to be docked in Gemini. Gemini with Neil Armstrong and Scott came up. They rendezvoused with, with the Atlas Agena and they docked. As soon as they docked, one of the thrusters went haywire and their combined integrated vehicle started to rotate at 720 degrees per second. <laughs> Enough to make the average person, me for sure, blackout, the mission would have been over, we would have been dead. Those two kept it cool during this horrifying experience and were able to stop the rotation, wow. figure out what the problem is, stop the thruster, stop the rotation, decouple and come straight home. Save their life, save the, the future of the program. If we had lost them on, on Gemini 8, there's a chance we never would have continued with the program. So was he awarded with the Apollo 11 because of that? A lot of people think he was. He certainly proved that he could handle stress under pressure. The other thing he did, he was on this vehicle, the lunar landing vehicle, in 68, just one year before he actually went to the moon, and the vehicle exploded. 
literally exploded and he was able to get himself out, how I don't know, and parachute down to safety from an exploded lunar uh, research vehicle. So, anyway, set your goals and don't stop till you achieve them. I've got three minutes. This, this is one we talked about with some of the graduate students today, but I, I put this in here because I think sometimes it, it's important to think about setting your stretch goal out there and work hard until you achieve it. Like one, if you want to go back to JSC again next summer, don't give up until, until you beat them to death. Not literally, but I mean, <laughs> work hard to make it happen. So here's the deal. Deke Slayton, that's a picture of Deke. He was one of the original seven astronauts. And after he got in the astronaut corps, they discovered he had a heart armor. So he was grounded. For nine or ten years, he served as the director of flight crew operations appoint one of the jobs the FCOD guy does is make the appointments of astronauts. Okay, Neil, you can be the commander of Apollo 11, and B, you can be the commander of Apollo 12. Never assigned himself to anything. He was grounded. So fast forward to 1975, he's selected as a member of the Apollo Soyuz crew, and they're going to go up and dock with the Russians. And he, there he is with Alexei Leonov in space. And while they're there, they get a phone call from President Ford. President Ford says to Deke, Deke Clayton, have you got any profound messages for the young people back here on the planet Earth? And his answer was, yeah, I think you ought to set your goals and don't stop until you achieve it. When I read that in the book entitled A Moonshot, it just stuck with me as being profoundly important about setting your goals and don't stop until you achieve it.